exception reporting and compression testing offer you the opportunity for maximum efficiency with your Pi points. The idea is to only store meaningful data in the Pi archives while discarding all the noise. Now, although Pi is capable of storing enormous amounts of data, it's important to store only this meaningful data in order to make your Pi server run the most efficiently and effectively that it can. So have you ever refreshed a trend only to see some data points disappear? Well, what you're seeing is the effect of exception and compression. But you don't need to fear because you'll see that the information being transmitted, the, the fidelity of the trend is still preserved with the points that have been kept and stored in the Pi archives. In this video, we'll go into what's actually going on here. So first off, why only store meaningful data? So the first one's obvious, disk space. You'll take up less disk space if you only store meaningful data. Next is network traffic. With properly set exception and compression settings, there will be less data to send over the network. Now this happens when the original data is sent from the Pi interface to the Pi server and whenever a client like Pi Process Book or Pi Data Link calls that data. We can significantly cut down on the network traffic load with properly tuned exception and compression settings. And lastly, performance. Storing excessive data in the archives is extra work for the Pi server. And whenever clients call for big periods of archive data, much of the archive data will likely be read from the hard disk. Now this can be an expensive operation, especially for big chunks of data. And lots of meaningless data equals slower client read times. So if you only store meaningful data in your archives, then the Pi server can retrieve bigger time ranges of data faster, giving you quicker access, and a happy Pi server. So there's two parts to this. There's exception and compression. We're going to go over the first test, exception first. Exception reporting takes place on the Pi interface node before the value is ever sent to the Pi server. And the point of exception is to reduce the communication burden between the Pi server and the interface noise by filtering out what is obvious noise. So here I have a thermocouple monitoring temperature. And this thermocouple has a certain instrument precision where anything that falls um, within that instrument precision is really just noise. Now I have an initial value right here and then I have other values coming in periodically every few seconds. And we can see that most of these values are within my instrument precision. B hasn't changed very much from A. And it's not meaningful. The thing is is that there, it's within the instrument precision. It doesn't mean anything significant and we shouldn't base decisions on this value. So what's great about the Pi Systems Exception test, Testing is it allows us to define a dead band to reflect that instrument precision. And what's more is you can individually tune all of your Pi tags to have their own exception settings. So the Pi tag attributes that um, define exception are exception max, which defines the length of time will go before we for sure report a value, and exception deviation, which defines the width of this dead band. Okay, now let's have a quick look at how this works. So we have a starting value right here, and we call this the snapshot value. This is the current value that is has been sent to the Pi server. It defines the current state of our process. Now, as we see as we go on, raw values are falling within our dead band. And we see one has fallen out, so this is an exception, and we're going to keep it. However, if we just stored the snapshot value and the new exception value, we'd miss what was actually going on with the data. So we end up sending the previous value as well, the exception and the one right before it. Okay, now this is easiest to see if you watch it in action. So here we have some raw values that were scanned at a data source, and we're going to see what happens as exception is applied to them. Great. So here are the raw values that pass the exception algorithm and have arrived at the snapshot table of the Pi server. You can see in this scenario, not too many passed exception, but in your scenarios, quite a few might. It all depends on the process and the exception settings. The next test is compression. This is a more thorough test and defines which data is stored in the Pi archives. Unlike exception, exp ex compression can have a slope. This is why we sometimes call it the swinging door algorithm because it looks like a door viewed from above with a width and a length and it can swing to match the slope of the data. 
Now, unless you're using the Pi buffer subsystem to buffer data, compression testing is taking place on the Pi server by the Pi snapshot subsystem before data is actually sent and written to the archive. If you are using the Pi buffer subsystem, then compression is performed on the interface node before it's sent to the Pi server. And this is important in case of a collective, so that both collective members have the same data. All right, so the idea here, again, is to store only meaningful data without losing any meaningful fidelity in the information. Since every sensor and Pi tag is different, it's important that you're comfortable with the mechanics of compression so you can confidently set your settings, the compression deviation and compression maximum, to match what's appropriate for you. So the compression algorithm is based upon three values. There's the most recently archived value, the current snapshot value, and the incoming value. Let's have a look. Okay, so in the beginning, there's only the most recently archived value and the current or snapshot value right here. Remember, the snapshot value is the most up-to-date value that has passed exception. It's the current instantaneous state of the process, thus we call it the snapshot. However, as time goes on, it's entirely possible that this snapshot won't be needed in the Pi archive. So the first step is to calculate these slopes. We have an archive value, we have a snapshot value, and we have the compression deviation settings. And we'll calculate the maximum slope and the minimum slope. A reference slope is calculated using the incoming event and compared to the maximum slope and the minimum slope. Then we have a decision to make. Will the existing snapshot value be written to the Pi archives? If the incoming event falls within this angle like it does here, the incoming event becomes the new snapshot value and we can discard the old snapshot value. And then we recalculate the minimum and maximum slopes. Notice now that our angle has narrowed a bit. Now, again, an incoming event comes in, and we compare it to our maximum and our minimum slopes. However, now there's one additional rule applied. The slopes calculated as the new slope and the minimum slope need to always be narrowing. So we'll see this one, despite the compression deviation reaching down to this S-min, that exceeds what our old S-min is. And one of the rules about a compression is that these angles must always be narrowing. So when our next snapshot value comes in, we see that it's outside of our acceptable angle here. And this means that we're going to keep this value and this one will become the new snapshot value. All right, so we define a new archive value that will be written to the Pi archives and we start the whole process over again. We can also see that between any two archive values, the compression deviation defines a parallelogram that holds any data that happened in between those two archive values. So again, this is easiest to see if you see it in action. So just watch this. We're taking the raw values from our exception test before and applying compression to them. So now we can see the raw value scanned at the, the source, what passed exception, what passed compression, the trend lines that Pi Process Book or Pi Coresight will draw, and we can see that all the values from the raw source still fall within the compression deviation we set up. So exception settings should generally be slightly less than the instrument precision, or you can set it to be about half of the compression deviation. For more details, you can consult this KB article on our website, 3226OSI8. Compression settings, we, we recommend this based on a, a ratio of the snapshot events to the archive events. Ideally, this is going to be a ratio of 10 to 1 or 100 to 1. And at minimum, it should be a ratio of 10 to 1 or 3 to 1. Anything less than that is going to be pretty hard on the Pi server. To check this, you can open up system management tools and go to snapshot and archive statistics and look at snapshot events and archived events to get your ratio. When is it appropriate to turn compression off? Well, OSSOFT generally recommends not ever turning off compression. However, it is appropriate for a few scenarios. For laboratory values or manually entered values or totalized points where every value is significant, it may be appropriate to turn compression off. Also, there may be government requirements regarding data collection that require disabling compression. If you set compression to off, 
then all exceptions are archived. Now, a suggested better option to turning compression completely off is to set compression to on, but to set the compression deviation to zero. This means that successive identical values will not be archived. For example, a value of off that is sent to the archive and is followed by another off will not be added. This is much more efficient. Okay, so that's exception and compression. You start with raw values, then you apply exception, then you apply compression. The trend that comes up in Process Book or PyCoreSight fully represents the fidelity of data within the instrument precision. For more information, check out our tech support website at techsupport.osisoft.com.